And uh, quick, 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 happy birthday to Mrs. Comfort Ejipong of Tesano. She's 73 today. 72, I beg your pardon. This is from all your children, home and abroad. They say happy, happy birthday to you, Mrs. Comfort Ejipong. Happy birthday to you. Also to Mrs. Grace Ohene, Assemblies of God, um, the Father's House of Future from all your children and you're 72. So Mrs. Comfort Ejipong is 73 and Mrs. Grace Ohene is 72 today. Happy, happy birthday. Also to Helen Ikea Arthur of St. Martin's Memorial Hospital in uh, Community 20 22. Happy, happy birthday to you. We're live from the University of Ghana and we're coming to you from the amphitheater of the Vandal City, as we like to call it. I've been joined this morning by two members of the intellectual community. One of your most favorite lecturers if you will is a professor of political science professor ransford jampo is my guest and is also with mr noel nuchuka he is a lecturer at the ghana institute of journalism my alma mater gentlemen welcome good morning how are you doing thank you, thank you so much good to have you prof yeah. Yeah. prof are you in high spirits um why not mm. are, are you in high spirits yeah i'm fine are you sure yes why are you giving government a tough time? Well, I don't think anybody is giving government any hard time. Mm. Um, there has been several discussions about um, the ongoing strike. Mm. Governments have said that the strike should be called off whilst it negotiates. People have felt that if heard it, if heard some of these concerns or some of these calls over and over, some way somehow. National Executive Committee of UTAG met, mm. and by by majority decision, um, they voted to or they agreed to temporarily um, halt the strike. Mm. And if I say by majority decision, every inquiring mind should know that um, it isn't everybody who agreed to that decision. Right. Uh, but it will be naive and childish for mm. us to come here to say that this one voted for it, this one opposed it, but. Uh, be that as me, mm. the decision has been taken. But the framers of the constitution of Utah were wise. Mm. Um, and so they placed a lot of power in the hands of uh, the constituents of Utah, mm. i.e., the lecturers. And so our constitution says that if NEC decides, the decision is subject to ratification by mm. members. So members mm. within five days must vote to approve or accept that decision right. or to reject it. Right. And that's what our constitution says. Mm. And so as we sit, as we speak now, voting have started on various campuses. I see. And so the point is that if, if the government is serious about mm. its commitment and proposals and promises that call off the strike mm. and let us negotiate, you have five days. After five days, you have another five days, okay? okay. Another five days as in if members decide that I am um, we want to reject the proposal from NEC. Okay, Which it will take history. it would yeah, it will okay. take it will take another five days for NEC to convene mm. to decide on the date for the resumption of of, of the strike. Okay. And so my point is that government has about ten days okay. if they are committed and if they are serious um, um, to the promises that they have made. They have within this short time frame to make overtures mm. and to put concrete, implementable proposals before you tag leadership. I, I come to you again for what your exact demands are. But Noel, you are a, long, a young lecturer. Yeah. How do you feel about the ongoing strike and the demands that your seniors, together with you, are making for government to give you better bread? Right. Johnny, I must say it is important that. Um, the likes of Professor Jampo had taken the center stage. They have been in. They have been at this for a very long time. They've been in the profession for mm. quite a long time. Mm. Um, they have buried themselves in this profession so much so that some of them may not even be thinking of exiting the profession. But I must also say that it is important to look at the flight risk mm -hmm. employees within the profession, and I'll okay. say they are the younger academics you're right. talking about 28 years i started lecturing at the age of 28 mm. you know up until about 35 years you have a cohort of academics within that region mm. 
who whose voice may not have been heard in the midst of all of this because of course you are living the center stage for someone i'll describe as a celebrity academic okay. <laughs> like professor jampo but what is important to note is that if i were a parent today and i hear that the ghana uh, the union the the the, the university of um, uh, ghana mm. the university of uh, uh, Education studies, Education all of them mm. are going back to the classroom and my ward is in these schools and the teachers are going back to the classroom under the conditions we have come to see that we are not negotiating with them mm. we are not engaging them we are throwing the spirit of conversation out the window and we are using the legal means to compel them i mm. say time and again as a public relations person that it is not everything that is legally right that is morally right and a lot of the times you can lose the you can win the legal battle mm. and lose the moral battle so you can compel the lecturers to go to the classrooms mm. but if i were a parent i should be worried that the lecturers are going back to the classroom under the same conditions they are complaining about so quality will be affected of course yes mm. and you see it is a, it's an issue of survival right we must go and do the extra to survive if you see any lecturer who is driving a decent car they are not driving it they are not earning you know much to drive those cars you're joking so i'm telling you the truth and that's why we are pressing home for the conditions of service to get better most importantly for us to we the younger ones to also travel the journeys mm. like the likes of professor jampo because obviously we are beginning to look at other options we are seeing our friends in other professions right you want to leave of course yes those are options why, we why are, do you want to leave those your are students, options your students love you i've come to teach you. i've seen you i've seen professor jampo in mm. his lecture halls the students love you yeah why do you want to leave johnny them? those are options since we are considering because then it's an issue of butter and bread i mean you have a family i have a young family i have a wife i have children to take care of and if it becomes a survival issue you see no amount of uh, bond can keep a mind or a soul that is determined to survive and will do everything to survive and so you are we are compelled to leave you see when we talk about lecturing people just think of the engagement in the classroom but for me, the crux of our profession is even the research component of the job, which is where you are refreshing your mind, you are getting you know, new ideas, mm. and the classroom engagement, and the student will be the ultimate beneficiary of, of, of that. I see. And that is, that is being tempered I, I hear, with. Prof, what are your exact demands? Have you made your demands so clear to government that as you tag, this is what we are looking for? Yeah, but this you, you, don't, you don't expect university chairs to go um, about um, striking without having uh, demands. I mean, what what are, are the demands? Um, basically, our, is watching. our conditions of service are not good. I mean, overarching. I mean, the conditions of service are very poor. But um, we've been magnanimous um, in the kinds of things that we are demanding. The government is supposed to undertake a study called the um, Labor Market Survey, right. um, which... Um, gives a certain component of a salary called market premium. Mm. Um, government has not undertaken, uh, had not undertaken that study um, survey um, way back around um, somewhere 2010, 2011, 2012. And so it was paying a, a certain component of our salary called interim market premium, okay. which was 114% right. of our basic salary. Mm -hmm. And then you, you must pause to ask them, what is the 114% of a basic salary of a lecturer? Tell me. Uh, uh, it will come up to around 1,200 or 1,400 yeah, cities. You're joking. And this is money that you cannot use to spend out um, in, in an evening. Mm. And so, you see, it even saddens me when we talk about some of these things because the demands are a pittance. The kinds of things that lecturers are even asking for. Okay, if government is unable to meet these, it simply tells you that we are simply not interested in helping those who are producing the nation builders. Okay, so you are paying one one four percent of basic salary, and then around twenty thirteen thereabout, government unilaterally issued a white paper to stop the payment of that um, um that 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 without component. consulting you. well i mean they did that unilaterally because uh, the utag i'm not sure was in the no otherwise mm. would have revolted mm. now that happened and then we've been at, at this talking 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 the last time we wanted to go on strike they said mm. give us opportunity mm. to go for um to go and uh, take another mm. Uh, market survey mm. and that they did in 2021 backdating to 2019 now they've given us a report and they 
said that once they have conducted the survey and given us the report, it must translate into improvement in our conditions of service. Does it make sense to you? How can a share paper report translate into improvement of the conditions of service? When we know that in 2014, a same survey was undertaken and its outcome was never implemented. Mm. And so members have said that, yes, you have undertaken your survey in 2021 and you have backdated it to 2019, no problem. You can spend 10 years to study your survey right. and implement it anytime you want to implement. But in the interim, restore us to the payment of 114% of okay. our basic salary. Well, that, that, you that you used to do. Arbitrary. Yes, that okay. you used to do. And I keep asking, do the math and see. What is the 114%? It is nothing. Prof, you go on sabbatical. You see your colleagues in other universities outside. How do you feel when you compare what you earn here to what they pay others outside? You see, I don't want to be emotional. And um, some of these things, they make you angry and sometimes they make you sad. Okay, as we speak now, I have so many um, calls. Sometimes you would casually put in application to other investors. And as if you are joking, they call you and they make offers. But then we also feel that if all of us will leave, who would develop the country? If all of us will leave, who would subject, keep the government on its toes? If all of us will leave, who would produce the nation builders? Okay, so it becomes a certain moral issue. You, you are not so comfortable leaving the country and all that. But when we see them, you feel miserable. And they laugh at you. You, 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 you prefer to stay here. That's why you are here. But the point is that they that say course. that to us. Okay, wow. recently, one of our colleagues got a job in one of the government, uh, government departments. Mm. I won't mention the name. Now, he called me and he was shedding tears. I said, why? He said he regrets staying here for that long. For that long. The kinds of allowances that he was privy to. Mm. Okay, the kinds of allowances that he's been given. When he switched jobs. Just recently, he shed tears and said, but why did I stay here for long? Because he's going about psyching people. It's not psyching people. They if, have to move. If, 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 you, if you get an opportunity, mm. you have to leave. Johnny, now, we I, teach I, I, and I can, we, let me, let me make this point. Right. We teach and you see brilliant students. And you want to school, you want to mentor, you want to train, you want to encourage. So that go ahead and do MFB. They, they begin to laugh at you. Uh, what, 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 what do you mean? You want us to come and join you, sign poverty warrant. I'm not poor because by the grace of God, but I'm thinking about the fact that um, there's some of the grace and some of the consultants and some of the other opportunities benefit. They are not there in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And it's not everybody who has access to consultancies per se. Okay. And so it's about time we looked at this battle and appreciate the fact that the fight for better conditions of service must transcend petty partisan political manipulations and politics. Because I know that some politicians now are trying to infiltrate our camps. You see, if any lecturer, if any university teacher allows politicians to infiltrate our camps just to pretend that things are well, when things are not better, we will have ourselves to blame. Yeah, I see. Some of us, by the grace of God, will always find that I'm elsewhere to do. But not everybody. And this must be our watch, our watch um, caution. Mm -hmm. That not everybody will be able to make other salaries or other incomes elsewhere. Right. And so we must guard against some of these things. Mm -hmm. I am not interested in sustaining or protecting the strike. Okay. If it must end, it must end. But it must end because there are tangible, concrete, implementable proposals put before you target leadership by government. And I'm saying that government, you see, all these calls that they were making, call off the strike and come and negotiate. People were not listening because they didn't trust them. It's up to them now to use this 10-day period to redeem their tra but, trust but you had deficit. But to meet the Minister for Education, Minister for uh, uh, Employment and Labor Relations. You had met the Vice President last year. You had met big people, everybody, fair wages, NLC. Why are you not happy? No, well, I come to you. No, well, I want to... but, um, if you meet them, meeting that.
doesn't um, put food on the table. And I've always said that we don't eat meat, we cannot be eating perpetuity. It's not about appeals that um, President Kufo is appealing, Sam Jonah is appealing. These appeals are good, but they don't feed us. Okay, they don't give us food. And so we would plead that they, they go beyond mere appealing to speaking to the powers that be. Mm. Okay? The finance minister who has been intransigent in, in his release of money, people must know, the politicians must tell him, he's doing his work as a finance minister, but these things cause bad blood and disaffection for the party. And they are quest to break the AIDS, mm. okay, cannot materialize with this kind of posturing that is taken. I see. We are making legitimate demands. Mm. Okay. I said, just the finance minister is an expert. Let him calculate the one one four percent of the basic salary mm. of a lecture and see whether he will not even be laughing at us. See. Noel, you are a young lecturer. What are the demands of the job on you? Right. So you are expected to enter or or get in with an MPhil. Mm. That's the basic, yeah. according to GTEC. Yeah. When you get in, what are the demands on you and how much pressure does it put on your pocket? In fact, Johnny, so the, the um, idea that you should get in with, a, with an M field and then later on you can do your PhD is actually a makeshift arrangement. And it's a makeshift arrangement because a lot of the times when the schools open, pos open up positions and are calling for PhDs mm. to apply, mm. a lot of the times the application period is over and you don't, don't have the people. You don't have the people applying, of course. People don't. Professor Jampo corroborates this position, and it is not a strange thing. All of the investing managers know that mm. a lot of the times when they say we are opening a, a, a vacant position for a lecturer in this, we need a PhD in this, a lot of the times they don't get it. So they made a, this makeshift arrangement so that those who have M fields and have the quest to do their PhDs will enter, and then they give you a certain period within which you should do your PhD. But it will be at your cost. Of course, yes. In a lot of the schools, it is at your own cost. You are doing that PhD at your own cost. I am currently a lecturer and a PhD student. So I'm, I, I, am being a, I am affected by the strike mm. in both ways, mm. both as a lecturer and as a yeah, student. A I'm currently a second year PhD. But you are paying for I'm your I'm paying PhD. my own fees. I'm paying my own fees. But, but when you get a PhD, you will use that to teach. Of course, I must come back and serve. And you see, sometimes the institutions would bond you and say, because you're a flight risk employee, we will bond you when you come back with, with a PhD, you serve five years. Mm. But let me say that the best form of bond or uh, bondage should not be the physical bondage. It should be the affective or the emotional one. Right. So that I feel so much attached to the university so much so that mm. if I am done with my PhD and I have even the, the nicest opportunity out there, I'll still come back to the classroom mm. and teach. But I tell you what, a lot of us, I have had senior colleagues who tell me that, look, I'm going on retirement next year and I have nothing to show for. And so you, this young man, I'm advising you to live here. Live here. They, they don't tell understand. You that. Yeah, of course, yes. They, they say they don't understand what they're doing here. They have, they have done living their lives. They are going on retirement and it is scary. And you are joining. They are wondering what, what is motivating you. And they tell me all the time. Say, go out there and look for opportunities. Even if uh, you are lecturing in some African, some other African countries, you are better off. You are better off than the average. M most, than most people assume that all you university lecturers do is to stand in the lecture hall and teach. Yeah. What else do you do? Of course, so like I said, the crux of what we do is researching. And you see, the research protocol is so daunting. To become an associate professor and a full professor, a senior lecturer, and, uh, and, and all the rest, is so daunting. Even the, your publication fees. Some, some journals are charging you as high as $2,000 to be able to publish your paper and make it... Uh, one article. Of course, yes, one article. To make it you know, accessible. To make it a free access. A free access paper. Otherwise, then it is locked. Now, if it is locked, what it means then is that not many people can access it and not many people can cite you and your impact factor as a human being is going down. So, all of that come to play in your promotion. Otherwise, you have submitted. But the point is, we don't even have enough to feed ourselves, not to talk of doing the research. And so, we run around. What Professor Jampo called Galamse is a very unique term. Not the illegal mind. Exactly. Mm. What we call Galamse is that 
you are doing your primary job as a lecturer, but you are running around doing other jobs. Most, most, most of the lecturers will be in some other private universities doing other jobs. And that takes a lot of your time. Mm. So the research time is shared with, you know, the research you're doing. And then the galam say. And so you notice that the average Ghanaian lecturer doesn't publish that much. Mm. When you compare them to their contemporaries, I had some colleagues when I was studying in when I studying in England. I had some colleagues who refused to come back. They some of them are lecturing in the University of Loughborough, big big universities in the UK. And when they look at you, you know they, 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 they ask why you came I back. I mean, you are late. You are just late in life. Someone who say I brought one beat you. You are late. And from so the, it is. It, it, I, I know that a little addition okay. before you ask right. a question about what lecturers do. Mm. So our core duty is teaching, yeah. mm. um, research, and extension yeah. activities. Explain that so extension, um, activities. extension activities is about um, your your service to the community, your service to international bodies, your service. I mean, you are there. Government calls that you come and advise, right. come and so, advise right. on this. Right. Um, um, raise funds. Like do all of that. We do all this. So, and extension so activities include the fact that you could call me early in the morning mm. to help take my views on what is going on on the governance landscape. It's my extension activity. So, so, so but, we do, but why doesn't government acknowledge that you well, do all no, these things? I mean, sometimes and when you go on strike, one of the big one of the of one of the problems or one of the features of every um, developing country is ignorance. I mean, <laughs> there, there's, it isn't everything that we know. Mm. So, if we are talking about the duties of a lecture, we teach, mm. we research, and we do extension activities. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that the teaching constitutes just about 5% of what we do. Or what you do in a lecture hall? Of what we do as teachers. Okay, that's, that's the smallest part. That's small. And actually, you may be sacked from the university for teaching too much. Explain. Yeah. Yes. If you're going to ask for promotion, apply for promotion. Periodically, you must, um, if you are not tenured, mm. okay, periodically, you must apply for promotion. Or the university would remind you, uh, your contract is ending. Mm. Um, um, well, come and renew. You so, come and renew. When are you showing that you are working? And if you are applying for promotion, so if you are appointed as a lecturer, I think in Lagos, on your first six years, after the first six years, your contract expires. And then you must renew. You must and what, what becomes the basis for your renewal? It's your work, your publication. Mm. Mm. So if you are going to apply for renewal, they look, what have you been doing? They look at your CV. Yeah. Where, where, are the, where, where are your, the, your, your research outputs? And then you say, well, I didn't research, but I was only teaching. Yeah. You, know, you may be given one year. Wow. The next time you go and said, I was still teaching, you may be given three months. By the time you realize, you may have been sacked quietly. The, because, the good thing is that the, teacher, the good thing is that you may it may not be announced, <laughs> but you find your way out. And so teaching is just the, a, a minute portion. Why, why does government make a big case when you guys go strike? Well, um, um, maybe because um, they want to be propagandistic or they are ignorant of the fact that mm. we have other important things that we do. Mm. And so for this particular um, um, strike, for instance, mm. research is going on briefly. That's the most important calling of a lecturer. It is a research that mm. shapes yeah. the nation. It's a research that produces the nation. Builders. It's a research that contributes to development. You see, how do you teach without research? Yeah. How do you think we are able to teach? Mm. You stand in the midst of your students yeah. and you speak yeah. because you have researched. Yeah. Without research, there is no teaching. Prof, in the lecture halls, the students love you like Noel. The students love you. Are you not worried that the students are stranded and they are looking for you to come and speak to them, teach them, and, and rap like you do? Are you not worried? No, we are worried. We've been worried all this while. I told you that. We've been, we've been at this fight from 2010, 2011, mm. and we've always been worried about the plight of our students. Remember, last year, December, we were going on strike. And then we said that students were in the middle of the semester. Right. They were about fighting the exam. Right. So let us consider that they are interested. The reason why we actually slated this strike for 10th of January was because we knew that students were home. 
So we, we wanted to go on the strike before school, um, school reopened so mm. that when they hear that we are on strike, they would mm. not come at all. But um, I mean, some of them, you know, bought them at home. So they, they are here. So we are concerned about our students. But the point is that we cannot place the interests of students over and above our own interest. We've done that all this while. We've sacrificed for them all this while. Mm. But um, we cannot love them more than ourselves. We must love them. We must love ourselves. Okay? We must love our students. We must love ourselves. That's why I've told them always, time and again, that when doctors go on strike, human beings die. Yes, they find every justification to go on strike for human beings to die. Once lives are lost, you are unable to replace. When teachers go on strike, it is only academic calendar that gets disrupted. Academic calendar are designed by human beings. And so we can disrupt it, but we can redesign it. As human beings will die. Let me take a contribution on that. Um, in fact, we are worried. I mean, in all of the things I do, the one I love the most is the one that pays me the least, and that's lecturing. So we are worried. We are far too kind. Yes, we are worried that we are not in the classroom. But I think that the students should be more worried that we are coming to the classroom in this state. They should be more worried. You see, why? The reason is this: what we are feeding them with is going to be their knowledge base okay. throughout their entire life. Mm. What you do here as a journalist, people praise you all the time. It is because a lecturer taught you how to do it, and then you know how to do it. So it is going to form. When I came here, you were rattling some of the theories that underget the things you do here. And those things are discussed in the classroom. And so it is going to form a part of your knowledge base forever. And for me, it is even more crucial for the way people think. The quality in the lecture. Exactly. The way people think can be more dangerous than people's health. Mm. We saw all of the, um, the wars that happened, and it's because of the way people think. It's because of what they are saying. It is because of what they know. And so, yes, we are worried that we are not in the classroom, but the students should be more worried of what lecturers in Ghana may be feeding them with if the lecturers are not in any proper state. They should be more worried. What, what is next? Now, the universities are voting. The various chapters are voting. But what is next? Government says, please go back to the classroom. Come and let's negotiate. What is next? Well, that is highly dependent on the individual campuses. To decide as an individual i am prepared to budge down temporarily and see if that meant for the second time we show good faith i am as an individual the vice president spoke to you before well yes we saw we, we saw all of you. those promises but we are ready to take the step one more time to show that we are not entrenched you know you after want all. to hear from the president no he not necessarily about this not necessarily i mean he has made a point about teaching already and that is in our ears. He said that you cannot become a billionaire when you are teaching. But we see other people become how, billionaires how, in how do you other feel professions. About that I, I, I feel insulted. The president was a teacher before. Exactly, I felt uh, maybe, a crack at it. perhaps because he could not become a billionaire as a as a as a teacher, so he had to switch to another profession where he could become a billionaire. That is a possibility. It is a possibility. We also want to become billionaires. Mm. Billionaire, no, yeah, which we like. You get what I mean? Mm. And so. Obviously, the, the, I am, I am as, an, as an individual, I am ready to batch down temporarily and see government show some commitment and some good faith. If that does not happen, we may advise ourselves. And in advising ourselves, there are a lot of other options. I mean, we have had some of the stakeholders, some of the very important stakeholders in this conversation tell us that if we are not pleased with our conditions of service, we should resign. I think that is the most really that is the most ridiculous statement I have heard. That university any, lecturers should course, resign. If we are not pleased, that is what some people say. And some very key stakeholders have made pronouncements that like that. The nation will crash. Exactly. And that is what we want. After all, other people are crashing it in other fields. Should we continue like that? Obviously, we have other options. We have other options. Doc uh, Prof, does your national council's decision make sense to you? Um the National Executive Committee. That's right. Um you see, I am a member of the National Executive Committee. That's right. And um, I think a decision has been made. It was a majority decision. And um, I don't think it's appropriate for me to come and talk about the, the sensibleness or the senselessness of that decision. Mm -hmm. I, can, I cannot be because I'm a member. Right. And once um, a decision is taken, 
mm. collectively um, we must abide by mm. it um, mm. even if you disagreed do, do you want to go um, back to the classroom no. like this um, the point is this it's a process a decision has been taken members must be given the opportunity or have the opportunity to vote to approve or to reject that decision and if those we are fighting for feels that the decision that the neck has made mm. is good enough and so they want to call off the strike i mean i work but for this, people this has gone beyond, beyond, beyond you Prof, this has gone beyond you i'm saying that it's gone beyond neck yes now it's about the your people individual lectures yes like no one yes. all of the guys yes they say now when they tell you something on the talk yeah come to us yes and let us decide yes are they happy with you um well you can say that um you can tell that many of our members were not happy with the decisions that the decision that net had taken but you see there is always a difference between being unhappy and translating your unhappiness into actual or concrete decision and so i'm saying that whether they were happy or they were not happy with the decision that were taken yeah, would show, would show in the, the voting the, the outcome of the voting okay. and i'm saying that i work for people mm. okay so if today the people that's why i was a bit upset that i put up information on my social media handle and people see that people said that i've betrayed the cause i said any inquiring mind who reads and understands english would know that what i wrote was simply a communication of what the national executive committee had a decision, decision that they had taken and not my individual individuals and i made the point that regardless of the decision that neck has taken members will have the right to decide to ratify and so if today members say that we like the decision we want we are we trust the promises that government has given to us we are we we we, are, we have respected or we've yielded to the calls that have been made to us and so we are calling off the strike temporarily if that's what members are saying i'll go with it if members say no we don't trust the promises and we want to continue with the strike i'll go with it and well, so i work with people well, you are with the neck if for example the nlc has taken you into court and the court rules that you are in contempt and they decide to come for all the neck executives what would it be leadership is about sacrifice people died and people lost their lives blood was spilled see so if people died and then you go to jail for three months so be it Noel, the, the question is this where do we go from here cover this well um like i said um the options are still very open to a lot of the flight risk employees of the profession professor jampo like i said earlier they are so much buried into the profession he said he, he can he can move but he has a lot of offers he's turning down mm. because then there is a moral obligation on him and so you, you know when you are too much i mean some of us started this barely six years ago and we may we may be able to exit easier than people like professor jampo and so the options are still open to us i am a very professional young man this is not going to affect mm. my professional conduct in the classroom it is not going to affect my commitment to my work i am going to be as committed as i was yesterday and will do the work we expect that the work comes with a commiserating you know uh, remuneration, remuneration right. if that doesn't happen we would advise the people are advising us to resign we may hit the advice you want to crash the nation we may hit we may it's a possibility I mean, we've come from the uh well, industrial revolution mm. come through agrarian society yeah. we're now information technology yeah. and artificial intelligence yeah. and that's why you are central yeah if you say you want to resign you want yeah. to crash the nation yeah if, if we if we must survive we must survive and survive well if we must survive we must look you know it is like you're drowning if you're drowning anything you find you hook on it you want to survive we are not in normal times but but the times are normal for others you see if <laughs> if 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 there was no one to compare our conditions of service to mm. or if we had seen all other professions come and say look because we are all struggling let's beat down our salaries we would earn the same thing that um, other people are earning brilliant why would we go on strike think about it if the politician 
the members of parliament, the ministers, were earning 5,000 cities, 4,000 cities. Why would Professor Jampo and I have the impetus to say we are I going on strike? I mean. We won't. <laughs> we won't. You don't, then you don't have the moral right. You can't even mention it. Then it is a very standard you know, thing that is happening. But if you see other people live other luxurious lives, we are the ones who can't afford homes in the Osus, in the cantonments, in the East Legons. I live close to the Ibrahim Mountain. If I have a 7 a.m. lecture on the Osu campus of GIJ, imagine I must wake up. At, by 5 a.m., I should set off. Today, when I was, coming, I was locked up in traffic. So if you have a 7 a.m. lecture, you must set off. You get to the, sometimes I get to campus and then I take about a 30 minute nap. So before I can, start before lectures. I start my lecture. And these are the realities you we are, are going too through. early. Yes, because we can't afford the homes around the campuses. We can't. We can't. Prof, take a final word for me. Uh, I'll ask you the um, same question. Where do we go from um, here? The students you see, are watching. The government, said, the government side said that call off the strike mm. and we have an offer to make. Right. right, And that we cannot negotiate with you when you're on strike. Mm. At least at the level of theory, theoretically, um, NEC has voted to suspend the strike, even though members are voting. If the government meant what it told us, it must use this time frame, five, ten days period, mm. to honor its own promises. I'm expecting that by now the ministries would have called um, UTAG leaders right. and spoken to them. This is what we are giving to you. Mm. And whilst lecturers are voting, these things may also fester and they will know right. that um, the government says uh, you are looking for 114%. I mean, it's negotiation. We, were, we said we are not negotiating. But if you have candor and honest confession that, look, maybe we ourselves, we've not shown that things are bad enough mm. per our own lifestyle. But really, maybe because of X, Y, Z, things are bad and we are appealing to, if there is candor, frank honest discussions and all that, and you are not even able to give the 114%, and you come to about 100%, or 90 would you take or that? something would you take no, that? it would be brought to members yeah. okay say, and the members decide? members are not are not lawless people our members are professors yeah okay so if you put some of these things before them they are reasonable enough to be able to you, interrogate you, you are being shortchanged well i mean given the way we are not only being shortchanged we are also being disrespected mm. okay the kind of disrespect and arrogance. Whilst we are at it, you get a minister of state or a deputy minister going about saying that we are not patriotic. We are not patriotic enough. And I'm saying that... And patriotism I, I, is I don't, hunger. I, no, no. We, we are not patriotic um, enough. And I question his understanding of the word patriotism. We are patriotic because we decided to stay and to teach. Okay? You see... Our elections and electoral politics and contestation becomes a do or die affair because everybody wants to join politics. If you win political power, you have access to an ATM machine on your veranda. Okay, so everybody that, wants that, to go that, there. That's, that's Wait, too graphic. yeah, everybody wants to go there. Mm. Are we pushing for the situation where lecturers also think that because we want to have some of the ATM machines on our veranda, we must abandon teaching and go into politics? There would always be threat of democratic relapse so long as everybody wants to get into politics. It would always be heated. Mm. Okay? If you go to other advanced countries, when elections are being held, it is peaceful, it is seamless. Mm. In our part of the world, when elections are being held, people get to the bush and forest to pray. Yes, we, yes, we. People are hiding, Gary. People are hiding because everybody is scared that something may happen. It's because we all want to get there. Are we saying that we should quit the profession and get into politics? If that is the case, let us all decide. We, we let us to, all, we have, let we us have, all resolve. We have to go, Prof. But, uh, Harry, give me a second. Let me ask Noel this. He's been former SRC president of uh, the GIJ, my alma mater. Are you happy with the level of support from the student unions? Well, I mean, I heard the students speak uh, when I was on my way here. And um, in fact, that is the reality. The reality is that there is uh, serious political infiltration, extreme partisanship, and there is political mentorship that is beginning even, even from the uh, leadership of, of students. And so you are mentored, you are a PA to a certain MP, and then by four years' time, you are prepared for a certain constituency. And that is, that, that is the norm. And of course, they see our lives, mm. they see what we drive, they see what we eat and live, 
and they don't want to come there. So obviously, you see very brilliant and eloquent students. You think that oh, these are people that should be mentoring for uh, academia. academia. Mm. These are people who should be mm. taken over from the likes of Professor Jampo when they they leave office. But obviously, they are disinterested in coming to sign their uh, poverty warrant, and they want to go to where it's lucrative. And I so, see. I mean, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Prof, I said this was the final one, but Harriet will forgive let, me. Let, yeah. let me quick, say quick, this: quick. that when I was in level two hundred, level mm. three hundred, I had a professor who kept telling us that when you finish, go to town. Don't come here. Because if you come here, you are signing poverty warrant. That's a professor telling Prof, us. Prof, you were part of the Mobrawa demonstration. You were part of it. Yes. Now, are you pushing government too hard to shut down the universities? I, I don't, I don't, I've always said this, that um, ideally per convention and all that the university should have been closed down. Um, the fact that the universities have not been closed down um, for me um, suggests that um, um, there is a certain hope, maybe by investing management, that things may um, be resolved quickly and all that. I'm not interested in the university mm. being shut down. That's not my interest. Okay. My interest is that our quest for better conditions of mm. service should be, should be um, respected or we should be listened to you know, in our fight. And so it's not about shutting down or pushing hard for investors to be um, to be shut down mm. it's about articulating our concerns and and bringing it to the fore so that they are addressed and it's not also about see some people i don't know anytime you make a demand you make a claim then they want to look at it from some partisan lens um so some people all of a sudden they say you are ndc yeah. sometimes they say you are mpp yeah. it doesn't make sense to me I'm runs for Jampo. NDC was there. We took them on. Yeah. When NDC was in power, we took them on. MPP is in power. We have legitimate demands. And the fact that it is a party in power, mm. a certain party in power, does not mean that all of a sudden our needs have been met. Yeah. You understand? So those who are saying, reading partisan meanings and all that, um, you are making the government unpopular, you are making the government uncomfortable and all that. It is not our desire to make anybody feel discomfort. Mm. Our desire is that 114% of a basic salary of a lecturer is around 1,400 or 1,500. And sometimes I get angry that why are we even making this demand? I hear you. Professor we are example. not asking for V8. We are not asking for that loans, they, loans they, they give us V8 and no, give us free accommodation all. and give us free telephones and give us free, free security. Well, free 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 well. Well. No. Free, we are not asking for all those. No. Professor Rans, for example, has been my guest with Mr. Noah Nuchiga. He's a lecturer also at the Ghana University of Journalism. And Professor Ran, for example, is here at the University of Ghana. We've come to you live from the amphitheater of the Vandal City.